Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing dysplasia. And if you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to watch our previous videos on our YouTube channel that have to deal with hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy, and metaplasia because they'll give you a good background information on this topic because this topic is pretty sweet and straightforward if you've done that. You can find those on our YouTube channel. So with that being said, let's discuss the cellular adaptations that occur that will lead to dysplasia. Now normally, the cells in our body are constantly under a lot of stress due to the environment that they are in, right? But when it comes to the cells in our body, one example of this type of stressful environment would be the stomach lining that's constantly being eroded due to stomach acid that uh, is interacting with the lining, right? But our cells have generated a way to adapt to that stressful situation. Now that's happening at the cellular level. Organs, however, are generally in a state of homeostasis. They're able to maintain that homeostasis by being able to adapt. Now, after a while, after the stress exceeds their limit, they're going to have to change in order to maintain their normal functioning and stay in a relative state of homeostasis when it comes to the function of the organ. And this change of the organ is based off of the type and severity of the stress that's placed upon the organ. An increase in the stress after a certain point will eventually lead to the growth of an organ because that's the only way an organ is going to be able to maintain its proper functioning uh, situation, proper functioning criteria during a stressful period. There are two main types of organ, uh, sorry, two main types of growth adaptations, and those are hypertrophy and hyperplasia. And in both of these types, essentially the growth of an organ is occurring. Now, we said earlier that organs are generally in a state of homeostasis. How can they be in a state of homeostasis if they are growing, if the organ grows, right? It has to go back down to its normal size, and that is what atrophy does. Atrophy allows for homeostasis of an organ. It allows for the organ to reduce its size and number of cells that are in the organ. Now that happens if the stress goes away, right? If the stress is gone, atrophy will occur and the organ will go back to its normal state and it will maintain homeostasis. What happens if the stress is not gone? Well, if there's too much stress or if the stress is not removed, that organ can change the type of cells it has to better uh, uh, be able to adapt to the stressful environment, to better manage the stress. And that is a type of cellular adaptation called metaplasia. That is what happens when a, a type of a cell, a differentiated cell, becomes a different type of differentiated cell, better suited for that stressful environment. Now, this is dangerous because eventually constant metaplasia, constant unreversed metaplasia can lead to dysplasia. Metaplasia is actually reversible, and that is very important. That is a key factor of metaplasia that you need to understand. If you remove the stressful situation, the metaplasia will resolve and it will undergo back to, you know, the, the tissue will go back to its normal state and it will continue being in a state of homeostasis. So we're going to talk about dysplasia, however, constant metaplasia that leads to a state of dysplasia. Dysplasia is an abnormal growth or development of cells. Okay, this usually occurs with disordered cellular growth that's occurring, right? That's usually what's happening. In dysplasia, you have abnormal and disordered cellular, cellular growth and usually it is a proliferation, proliferation. Wow, that was so hard to pronounce. Usually, dysplasia is a proliferation of precancerous cells, meaning they will eventually go into a cancerous state. Okay, that is very important. Usually, dysplasia arises from long-standing hyperplasia or metaplasia. Why does that happen? Well, remember, hyperplasia and metaplasia both actually are playing, uh, are both are actually affecting the body at the stem cell level, right? At the stem cell level, you're inducing changes that's going to allow for either an increase in the number of cells in the in the case of hyperplasia or a change in the type of cell in the case of metaplasia. Because you are affecting these stem cells, you are more likely to cause, you know, uh, like malfunctioning uh, errors to occur that can lead to dysplasia. 
It is removable. Dysplasia is still removable, similar to metaplasia, okay, especially if the stress is removed. So an example of dysplasia would be Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus can, reg can regress to the normal esophageal lining if you remove it, but if you don't remove the stress, it can progress to carcinoma, especially dysplasia. So again, the carcinoma is the irreversible state. So this is still in your reversible state when it comes to pathology. Once this progresses from dysplasia to a neoplasia or a cancer, this is going to be irreversible at the cellular level. Now you can obviously give it a uh, medic. Uh, you can obviously give people with cancer medication to reverse the cancer. But at the cellular level, on its own, it's not going to reverse. One example of this would be cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, also known as CIN. So let's talk about that, and we'll wrap up this lecture. So CIN is a precancerous condition. Cervical intraepithelial neoplasia is a precancerous condition in which you have abnormal growth on the surface of the cervix, okay? you have abnormal uh, surface growth of the cells. Now, you can classify this as CIN1, 2, and 3. Usually, CIN1 is going to be the low-grade neoplasia, okay? In this case, you have dysplasia that involves about one-third of the thickness of the cervical epithelium, okay? Just one-third. In CIN2, you have more abnormal changes that are occurring about one-third to two-thirds of the epithelial layer. It's going a little bit deeper into the epithelium, right? You're having some precancerous lesions. And then CIN3 is going to be severe dysplasia, okay? It, des it describes a condition that affects more than two-thirds. So more than two-thirds, you have CIN3. And that is what's depicted right here. You see, this is your normal uh, epithelial lining of the cervix. In CIN1, you have mild dysplasia, as you can see right here. In CIN2, the dysplasia continues right into almost be more than the one-third into two-thirds of the space. CIN3, you have a lot of dysplasia. And then eventually, if you do not correct this, if you do not manage this properly, you will get uh, carcinoma, right? That's what ends up happening. You have invasive carcinoma that's invading right there. Now, that is an example of dysplasia to neoplasia, uh, the whole process that goes on. Key things to remember about dysplasia is that dysplasia is an abnormal growth of the development of cells, and it usually occurs due to a proliferation of precancerous cells, whereas metaplasia does not affect the precancerous cells. It's just a change in the cell type. Dysplasia uh, also is similar to hyperplasia and metaplasia, and it can be caused from hyperplasia and metaplasia because those two cellular adaptations, specifically hyperplasia and metaplasia, affect stem cells, and because they affect stem cells, they can lead to dysplasia and give you a higher likelihood of developing cancer with dysplasia. Now, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos. I hope this was helpful. If it was, let us know, and we'll see you right back here real soon. Thank you.